The Boys State Basketball Tournament semifinals wrapped up last night in Madison. In Division One, capping off the night, the first Division One semifinal between four seed Nina and Arrowhead, the top seed. And last year's state runner up Arrowhead was a wild one. The Rockets tried to play spoiler, and this game, like I said, it was a good one. And now we're picking up in the first half. This was the play of the first half. Brady Corso, the steal and the dunk. That made it 14 to 8 Rockets. But we're going to skip ahead all the way to the final minute of regulation. The game tied at 60. Green Bay commit Bennett Bassage comes swooping in for the missed free throw. Gets a put back bucket and one. Arrowhead was up 63-60 after he made the three throw. Then the final seconds of regulation. Nina trailing by three. Justin Jansen game tying three pointer at the buzzer that tied it up at 67. So we head into overtime. It's Jansen again a chance to win it at the buzzer in the first overtime. That comes up short. So what he also came up short in double OT. So we had to triple OT a chance for Corso there in the third OT, but he misses. And yes, we had to quadruple overtime in the fourth overtime. Jansen making the triple that made it 93 91 Arrowhead 37 seconds left. Still a two point game here. 10 seconds left Arrowhead at the line. They miss the free throw. They get the rebound though. So Nina unable to secure the rebound, try and score and maybe tie up the game. And that's how this game would end in four overtimes. Arrowhead, they would go on to win 99 to 95. Cody Crop and Doug Ritchie with more on a wild one in Madison. It is really hard to put into words, Doug, what we just witnessed. I, I got goosebumps. I know it's not the way Nina wanted to finish this season, but what a historic way to do it. Just on a general historic perspective, this is something that we've never seen in the WIA State Tournament. Yeah, four overtimes never happened, 99-95. That many points never happened. And, you know, Nina did everything right to win this game. Arrowhead did everything right to win this game. But in basketball, only one team wins. And you always hear the cliches, no one deserves to lose this game. Nina didn't deserve to lose it. Arrowhead just might have made one player one half a play more. And that's the difference in the game. And Nina was the underdog, too. Credit them. No one gave him a chance. No four seeds ever won. And when, when Jansen hit that three-pointer, just this place absolutely went bonkers. We laid it on the line tonight. Uh, personally, uh, disappointed. I didn't do a better job of at the end of overtimes one, two, and three and, and getting us better shots. You know, I'm going to probably crucify myself over should I have called a timeout, should I have done this. feel like I let the kids down a little bit. At the end there, uh, it comes down to heart, and I know that all of our guys laid everything they had on the line. We were doing it for each other. Um, we fell up short, but I know that everybody in that locker room at the end of that game gave all that they had and I'm so proud of this group um, of what we've accomplished and where we got to. You know, obviously fatigue is a factor there but at the end of the day it's what you got deep down. I know those guys laid it all out on the floor for me, gave me everything they could. We don't want to go look back and say oh I could have done this, I could have done that. We want to leave it all there as this was our last one. In this third straight state appearance for Nina I know they didn't come home with any hardware, but it is one they're going to remember. Everyone in this gymnasium is going to remember. And of course, in that WIA record books that get handed yeah. out every year, it's going to be remembered. Yeah, it is. Um, and some of the memories for Nina are actually going to be good ones. The loss will hurt them for a very long time. But what a, if you're going to lose a game, what a way to do it. I mean, it's just a fantastic game. And Nina has absolutely zero to be ashamed of because they put on quite the performance. For Doug Ritchie, Cody Krupp, we're at the Boys Basketball High School State Tournament. You're watching Fox 11 Sports. Keel Boys Basketball has made it to state two times prior in their school history, in 1974 and in 2010. They entered this year's tournament a perfect 28-0, one of just two teams in the state still unbeaten. They were the three seed, taking on two seed Lakeside Lutheran in the semis this afternoon. Raiders down seven in the first half, but end it on a 19 to five run. Grant Muntz leading the charge. He had a team by 15. They were up six at the break. They increased it to nine about five minutes into the second half. Pierce Arns, the hoop and the harm. He had 12 points. Lakeside responds though. Their sophomore center, a beast down low. Wes Ron, the putback off the missed three. He had 20 points and 18 rebounds. Keel down three now with under a minute to play. Jack Heckman for three in the tie. You got it. Warriors holding for the last shot. And this is a high degree of difficulty for Casey Guzman. Off glass going away from the bucket with a second and a half left. And when Arns' last chance heave is wide left, 
Heels perfect season comes to a heartbreaking end. They fall 57 to 55. For more on a loss that will sting for some time, we head out to the Kohl Center. Cody Krupp and Doug Ritchie are live. Guys, just a tough time for your first loss of the season. Yeah, Ryan, I feel like you'd almost have rather lost by 20 points and got beaten by a better team. But really, for the most part, Keel, especially after a little bit of a slow start, they were the, the better team in this. And then, just like that, with, like in the second half, it just all slipped away, and you saw how it ended uh, pretty heartbreaking fashion. Yeah, Keel led by five with less than nine minutes to go. And you're just hoping, can, can they get an extra bucket or two to stretch this lead out? And they never could. And Casey Guzman, 17 of his 20 one points in the second half the last two were right there mm. uh, just just a tough way to go down but when you lose that state it's always tough yeah like they like coach said we didn't come here to be semi-finalists we were here to win a trophy unfortunately that's not the case here in Madison these kids have been resilient to all season anytime we've met adversity adversity they've responded um, so there was there was no panic, anything like that. It was calm, cool, collected. Um, up until, you know, it went zero, we really believed we were gonna win. It's quite the accomplishment to get to here. Um, this is not what we came here for, though. We came here for a ball. Um, so it's it's disappointing, to say the least. You know, I, my goal is just to keep in front and make all someone else score. And I mean, that was a tough shot. I, I felt like I had decent defense on him, and he hit tough shots all night, so that was just one of many. I mean, our team is, something special our chemistry is just unlike many teams so that's what led to our success that locker room that was just a pretty sad so we're all gonna miss each other and uh you really can't blame the defense on that final shot by lakeside lutheran i i mean i don't know how better you could have defended it just like like uh, like you said uh it made a tough shot in a big moment yeah pierce Harns had great uh, position on that play Sometimes really good players make really good plays, and Pierce Harns talked about that. Guzman made at least one too many in the second half for Keel. Tough shot, but at least he, they earned it. They did. And we got Nina coming up tomorrow. That is the second of our two semifinals featuring teams out of Northeast Wisconsin, hoping to at least get one team into a championship Saturday. But for Doug Ritchie, Cody Krupp, a tough finish for what was an undefeated Keel Raider squad here in Madison.